go to patreon.com slash tiltedtripodmedia. Support this channel by becoming a member and unlock the future of video. Click that subscribe button and smash that bell icon. Yeah! Ah, yes, another episode of Try This. Finally, you're probably saying to yourself, well, that is, if you enjoy watching this kind of a thing, this one's going to be a little different because I'm going to be trying or attempting to fix an old vintage radio that I picked up at a local antique store. I picked this radio up for $8, and it didn't say whether it worked or not, and initially it didn't, but a little bit of fiddling, and it came to life. But cosmetically, it's kind of a mess. You can see the silvers coming off around the edges, and those speaker grills are all gummy and nasty from, you know, deterioration over the years. So I'm going to attempt to fix it. I do have basic knowledge of how electronic components work, so I'm going to also attempt to try and get the radio working better than it already is. I mean, it does work, but just not perfectly. Um, it was nice to see that the battery compartment was not corroded or anything. I could slot some batteries in, and it worked. I wish I had a power lead, but I don't. And I'm sure I could find one somewhere online, just a generic one, but, you know, it's mostly just going to sit on a shelf and, you know, just kind of look real cool in my studio. Every night, you can watch Newsmax's number one show, Greg Kelly Reports. Greg Kelly and Newsmax are on a... ...the destination of the people's house. Mm -hmm. But we, what we witnessed yesterday was not dissent. It was not disorder. So the first thing I was going to try to do is just take some Krylon spray paint and spray it in a bowl and then just sort of brush it on to try and cover up the spots that were sort of wearing thin, give it some new life. This would be the easiest thing to do. Unfortunately, this didn't really work. Um, I don't know. The paint didn't really seem to want to stick and cover things up real well. You can see there how it kind of smears around like that. Just peculiar because this paint is made to stick on metal, which is kind of odd. So um, for time's sake, I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to watch this for like an hour while I, <laughs> you know, do what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, so that didn't turn out well. You can tell where the paint just didn't want to stick to the metal for whatever reason, just kind of smeared around. It's not all even, and I just don't understand. It's so weird, because I've never had trouble painting something like this. Well, I guess it's, you know, on to plan B, and we'll give it another go. So now that I had all this goopy paint on there... I had to figure out a way to try and get it off. So my initial thought was something like Goo Gone or maybe some paint thinner. Um, I'm trying Goo Gone right here, and you can see it's not doing a whole lot of anything. It does say that it will get rid of paint, um, but I wasn't quite sure how successful that would be. It was just something I had laying around. I wanted to try it before going out to the store. So now we're going to move on to something a little more heavy duty and pull out the scraper. And we're going to spread some of this um, paint thinner or paint stripper on and let it sit for a few minutes and see what that does. And then scrape and scrape and scrape until I can get all of the gunk off. And boy, was this a disastrous mess. And I'm sure those of you out there that are into restoring old electronics or radios or whatever are probably going, ooh, what's he doing? And you know what? I was just trying to do whatever was easiest to get this thing looking better and, you know, picking up radio stations and whatnot so I could display it on my shelf. And this is the very first project I've ever tackled like this. Um, I've never tried to restore any piece of electronic equipment before, although I do have knowledge on, you know, how electronic components work and soldering and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, um, you know, you're going to go through the trial and error periods where you, you win some and you lose some. 
So after scraping off all the paint and all the goop, uh, you know, I thought maybe the paint isn't sticking because of the residue and all the stuff that was on there previously, and I needed to start fresh with clean, fresh speaker grills. But you can see here, as I'm putting it on, it's just not adhering. It's not spreading. It's all thin and, you know... Um, but I thought maybe I need to just do little thin coatings and just keep going at it, and, well, boy, was I wrong, and you'll see. So this is what it looked like after I, you know, painted it with several coatings of thin paint, and it looks kind of terrible. And so I conceded to the fact that I'm going to have to pop this thing open, grab out the tools, and pull it all apart to try and get at those speaker grills. Oh, and if you're still watching, definitely watch till the end of the video because I'm going to insert in here. I've got a really special find that I wanted to share with everybody. This thing just did not want to come loose. I pried and unscrewed all the screws and, you know, it just would not let go. But persistence and it finally did come loose. So here we finally have the front panel of the radio taken apart. And you can see I managed to get one of the speaker girls out. And of course, I made a goopy mess on you know the inside because it of course it leaked through the speaker grill and down inside fortunately it didn't get on the speaker itself but um at least i was able to pry off all of the metal parts for the speaker grills and take them over to the sink and wash them a little bit of background information and history on this radio this is the sears solid state transistor radio the model number is the 132 I couldn't really find a manufacturer date for this, but it looks like it dates back to sometime in the 70s, and, um, you know, it picks up all your AM and FM stations, and this particular unit struggles to get some of the stations that are on the weaker side, like I can't pick up quite all of my local stations on the FM band and AM band, but, you know, for being something that's roughly 40 or more years old, you know, I think it's pretty good that it just turns on and operates. I figured it would be a good idea to go about cleaning this stuff with just some cool water and, you know, a soft bristled toothbrush to try and get some of the gunk off and whatnot. For the most part, it worked. It kind of didn't work so much on that um, plastic front piece, but it worked fairly well on the speaker grill, as you can see. I just used a little bit of, like, um, soft scrub or bar keepers and, you know, use the brush at an angle to get down into the little holes and scrape off the rest of the paint. Yeah, so I've just given up all hope that it's ever going to be black again, and I'm just going to leave it silver. Most speaker grills back then were silver anyways. In fact, I found some similar radios that did have silver speaker grills in them. Um, you know, at least from afar and in my studio, it will look fantastic, and it does work. It picks up radio stations, and, you know, I don't really have much to complain about that. Congressman Brad Winstrup, uh, thank you. Your statement's on your website. I'm going to ask Tony Bender to put it up on ours, and we'll see see what happens. But uh, going to be in for a rough ride, uh, especially the first... It's common to change your professional goals. At Indiana Tech, we give you flexible ways to take charge of your career. This is the Sears Comtrex 9. And boy, is it a thing of beauty. I just absolutely love all the silver trim and the large knobs. And just the look of this thing is absolutely stunning. This unit is in remarkable condition for dating all the way back to the 1970s. This is a 9-band unit, hence the name Comtrack 9. What you're looking at right now is a gauge. This is for when you're listening to shortwave so that you can, you know, figure out the time and when your program's going to be on for different parts of the world. The Sears Comtrack series was designed to compete directly with the Zenith 
transoceanic models. And in my opinion, I think the Sears Comtrak version is a much nicer looking unit. This unit has these very large satisfying levers that are used to change the different functions of the radio. They kind of remind me of the levers on a tape cassette deck. Over here we have an indicator and there's a corresponding lever that when pressed will check the uh, condition of your batteries. It'll tell you whether they're good or bad. This unit does work, however it could use a little bit of work to get rid of some of the static in some of the stations and various other little bugs. But for now, take a listen to the Sears Comtrak 9. Government expert, I just handle sports. Segment, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Let's continue with your calls. Thousands on hold, millions are listening. And uh, I'm sure every 88 year old is computer savvy and will yeah. be sharp. Yeah. yeah, very sharp. Yeah. And tomorrow morning at. <laughs> it's on inauguration day. Greg Clugston, Washington. Also with SRNews.com, Harvard Law Professor Ellen. such it serves primarily to remind you how deep is our love for the oh. Oh. Man. if you don't love your glasses return them within 30 days no questions asked try on warby parker frames at home or virtually today the most fun and convenient way to shop for prescription eyewear text sight to 64,000. If you'd like me to do an episode where I go more in depth on this radio, its history, and try and restore it back to its original condition and get it working um, to 100% of its potential, then leave a comment down below and give the video a thumbs up. And I'll make a video on this thing in the future where you can see the insides of it and all of that. But for now, that's going to do it. And as always, thanks for watching.